Dennis Rodman is figuratively and literally the most colorful character that we have ever seen in the NBA. From the wild brawls that he took part in to doing the most bizarre and outrageous stuff outside of the basketball court, the man known as the worm never fails to entertain his audience. I mean, he's the only sports figure who had the guts to make friends with a dictator, and this dude once skipped practice just to become a tag team partner with Hulk Hogan. Sheesh. <laughs> but hey, you gotta give it to the man, cause he always gets what he wants. Well, except for that one time. After playing 23 games for LA, Rodman got signed by the Mavs in 1999. While playing for the Bulls and Lakers, Rodman wore jerseys numbers 91 and 73 because it sums up his favorite number, which is 10. When he played for the Mavs though, Rodman decided to shake things up by choosing the number 69 as his jersey number. Now with his bad boy reputation, associating the number 69 with Rodman paints a bad image for the league as far as then NBA commissioner David Stern was concerned. And because of that, David Stern rejected Rodman's request, and ever since that day, no NBA player has ever worn the number 69. Rodman eventually added one to make his jersey number more family friendly, and though his preferred number got banned, there's actually a photo circulating online that the Mavs really printed the controversial jersey, and Mark Cuban even hangs it in his office as some kind of rare memorabilia to prove that this story really happened. And uh, that jersey number is just one of the many things that got banned in the NBA. In 2017, a YouTuber named Dawson Gurley, aka Big Dawes TV, went viral for going to the NBA Finals while impersonating Klay Thompson. He would also walk around the city and play one-on-one -on -one with strangers on the streets, dressed up as Klay. And many people did believe that he's really the other half of the Splash Brothers. So anyway, for Game 5 of the 2022 NBA Finals, Gurley decided to take his prank game to the next level by trying to get inside Chase Center looking like Klay Thompson. And, uh, <laughs> like other unsuspecting fans, Gurley fooled most of the arena staff, and what's even more shocking is that even the security officials just casually let him in. After breaching all the different layers of security, Gurley continued walking into the arena, and a few moments later, he made it to the court and... Oh, I just take the ball, start dribbling. As soon as I start dribbling, everyone just clears off the court. And I, I... Hell no, uh-uh. That's not, bro. After a brief shoot around, a security official finally noticed that he wasn't the real Clay and quickly got escorted out of the arena. Now, later that afternoon, Gurley went back to the Chase Center with actual tickets to watch the game, but before he could enter the arena, the vice president of security stopped and gave him a lifetime ban letter because of what he did earlier. Anyway guys, aside from banning people, the NBA has also banned players from wearing certain basketball gear and accessories, and this includes this thing right here. A wave of elite players like Kobe, LeBron, and D-Wade started wearing compression tights, a trend that was first introduced by Jerry Stackhouse. League officials, however, didn't like players wearing leggings because they didn't like the look and thought it was a fashion trend, and so they intended to have it banned moving forward. At the same time, though, science showed that compression tights help players in terms of performance because wearing tights increases blood flow, which then absorbs the strains as muscles are pulled when performing intense exercises. Now, with that being said, the league allowed players to wear tights as long as they send a written request from their team doctor detailing that they'll be using them for, quote, medical purposes only, and not just simply wearing it because it looked cool. Eventually, the imposed ban on tights didn't last long because of its medical implications. And to make it more visually appealing, the league decided to have the leggings color coordinated with team jerseys to give them a more uniformed look, which we now commonly see in today's NBA. Now, while D-Wade was successful in making the compression tights trendy, he wasn't as successful when he tried to make his customizable Band-Aid famous. See, after getting a cut underneath his left eye during the 2009 season, Dwayne Wade started wearing a Band-Aid like most normal people would do. The only thing, however, was that they were a bit flashy and had different designs on them. Like, there was the one that had his name on it, a Flash logo, and there was even an American flag depicted on one. 
Though the league allows players to wear band-aids or any form of bandages for healthcare purposes, putting personalized branding, a commercial logo, or any type of identification on the item is a big no-no with the league, and as a result, the NBA shut down D. Wade's newly found fashion movement before it even took off. Anyway guys, aside from band-aids, the NBA also issued bans on a couple of shoes, and APL's Concept One shoe is one of them. Back in 2009, the Athletic Propulsion Labs Concept One shoe introduced a revolutionary feature that can increase a player's vertical leap to as much as 3.5 inches, which was called the Load and Launch Technology. When the NBA got wind of the news though, they banned the shoes immediately, citing that whoever uses that pair of sneakers will create an unfair advantage towards other players who were just using regular shoes. Now at first, I really didn't believe these shoes were that groundbreaking for the NBA to issue a ban, but after looking into it for a bit, I was pretty sold that these sneakers could really change the game in the NBA because here's what I found attached inside of it. There are real actual springs in here. <laughs> Sheesh, guys. With those springs, players like Nikola Jokic and Luka Doncic would have the hops of, like, Vince Carter. <laughs> anyway, wearing headbands wasn't really a big fad back in the 90s, but it eventually found its way creeping into the league around the mid-2000s. The NBA initially didn't care about it at first, but after seeing a lot of players start wearing them, they decided to cash in once again and replaced all the team-issued plain headbands with a new version that featured an NBA logo. Now, for some players like Rasheed Wallace, wearing a headband with a silhouette of Jerry West was, um, not his thing, and so he decided to turn his headband inside out. But as expected, the NBA didn't like what Wallace did, and so the NBA called him for it. Now, some years later, Rondo tried to outsmart the NBA because instead of turning his headband inside out, he wore it upside down. And uh, I think you already know how it all went down. Anyway, next off here, just like the APL Concept One shoe that we talked about earlier, this next band item had the potential to create an unfair advantage. Well, that's at least according to the NBA. Once again, another D-weight item has been flagged by the league, but this time around, it was his controversial goggles. Now, to D-Wade's credit, he admitted that he was having severe migraine issues at the time to justify the use of his preferred goggles, because that item can really protect his eyes from light sensitivity. After the Heat had sent the NBA some pictures of his eyewear for approval, they rejected the request, saying that the lenses of the goggles were just too dark and therefore creates an unfair advantage because opponents would not be able to see his eyes. The Heat then submitted another type of goggles, which was in return approved by the league. However, this one had specs and was not as tinted as Wade hoped for. Here's Wade with 13 consecutive field goals. In that game against the Knicks, Wade dropped 34 points while wearing the second grade shades. I'm pretty sure if Wade dropped like 50 or 60, the league might have just banned those second grade glasses as well. <laughs> anyway, this next one is probably the biggest ban that the NBA has ever imposed in league history, and uh, a lot of players clearly weren't happy about it. On October 17th, 2005, the fashion conscious commissioner David Stern once again brought down the hammer by cracking down on players who love to wear baggy casual clothing. Yeah, kind of like that. But I was referring to what Allen Iverson used to wear. Sorry, Timmy. Anyway, the NBA dress code of 2005 disallowed players from wearing any kind of bling or jewelry items, whether it was a chain necklace or pendants, to even wearing sunglasses and headphones inside the arena. Players like Jason Richardson say that rule kind of restricts their self-expression and feels that it was an attack primarily against black players. That was kind of racist, as you can't wear chains outside your clothing. I don't understand what that has to do with being business approachable. You wear a suit, you still could be a crook. A guy could come in with some baggy jeans, a do-rag, and have a PhD, and a person who comes in with a suit could be a three-time felon. Meanwhile, LeBron seems to be pretty chill about it and has no problems wearing business attire during pre-games. No, it's not a big deal, not to me. Sometimes you feel lazy and you don't feel like putting some clothes on, but this is a job. 
We are going to have fun, but this is a job and we should look like we're going to work. That's the way we feel.